Okay, I guess we can start. Um, okay. Oops. So uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome Olga Postanova uh, to give uh, the first uh, seminar uh, in the new campus. Okay, so uh, Olga uh, comes from uh, the Ola International Mathematical Institute. And uh, in this talk, we will talk about skill horizontality and the uh, leaderships of NI for classical videos. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm very honored uh, to be invited to your uh, joint uh, seminar. It has been about a week that I have been here, and I have also given one uh, seminar yesterday. Uh, all, all that I can say is uh, I'm very uh, amazed with uh, this new campus and with the scientific community that was uh, created here. Uh, so uh, thank you again for inviting me. Uh, well, uh, today I was going to I, I'm going to talk about uh, the joint work uh, that we have been doing with uh, Anton Nazarov, uh, Pavel Kitsen, and Travis Scripto uh, on the uh, limit shapes of Young diagrams and how uh, this problem is in fact connected with the skew how geology. So. Uh, Many I would uh, right now give some introduction uh, to uh, the problem. So uh, actually, uh, the problem of uh, limit states uh, of young diagrams goes back uh, to the uh, Lamb's problem on the length of the longest increasing subsequence, and uh, actually. Um, it was uh, firstly uh, the limit shape for young diagrams uh, was studied by the uh, author uh, global chef, the author of in the uh, 1980s. Uh, so uh, after we uh, applied the uh, so, so the, this in fact this problem is actually uh, connected with the RSK algorithm but I, I will be telling you about this uh, later uh, so uh, also uh, the uh, problem uh, of uh, limit shapes and uh, the idea of the uh, tensor product decomposition was uh, later studied by, by uh, different authors. Uh, one of them was uh, here, and yeah, maybe I, I can show you uh, the slides. But actually, uh, this is uh, one uh, part that uh, was uh, well studied, and then there, there is this uh, skew uh, algebraically, which I have uh, introduced as the in the name of my talk, and how, uh, well, what does this uh, have to do? So basically, that is uh, the, uh, the purpose of my talk is uh, to uh, explain how uh, this fact uh, from the representation theory uh, will help us uh, to derive uh, the limit shapes uh, for uh, various uh, problems using, uh, well, for various algorithms. So basically, that is short advertisement of what we have been doing. Uh, okay, let's see if it does that work. Okay. Now the presentation does work. No. Yeah, yeah, maybe I will just say. Yeah. Okay. So as I have uh, announced earlier, so firstly, the one thing that uh, everybody knows is uh, the true uh, volatility. So if we consider the cycle space, uh, we will have the beauty actions of a uh, symmetry of and actually uh, we can uh, consider this as a uh, bimodule. And here we will sum up of the partitions of size A uh, with the number of those that is. So in fact, uh, we can uh, introduce uh, the measure, and that is what Kirov did uh, in, in 1986. 
he used this uh, wild geology to construct a measure on Young diagram uh, of size. Uh, of size. So I can use this word. Yeah. Okay. So here uh, it is possible that you derive the explicit formula that is uh, uh, already because the dimensions of the GLN module is known and also the dimension of the module of the symmetric group is known. And so uh, the uh, following expression for the measure uh, was uh, um, was used by here. So yeah. Okay. So now uh, using so the true biology. Now, if we try to ask the asymptotic questions. So uh, there were various studies in the uh, various uh, regimes that the asymptotics have uh, been studied. So well, what we uh, do, we consider the virtual shape in shape. That was what uh, I was telling about in the beginning. Uh, it, it is the regime when the n and k goes to infinity and the uh, ratio of k and n uh, goes straight to the cost. Now, we have this, uh, the uh, famous character uh, in the shape of the young diagrams. And also, uh, there were uh, some studies, uh, uh, yeah, in uh, 2000, the year 2000, uh, by uh, Young, uh, where he had uh, the deformation of uh, the uh, the shape uh, by uh, also by this regime where k over n squared uh, goes to positive. But that was a study uh, long ago. So this is just some introduction of the scope of the problems that the asymptotic representation theory, well, in St. Petersburg also uh, have dealt with. Um, so, um, oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's around time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, the important uh, important thing uh, to note is that uh, the sure wild reality is actually we must uh, note that uh, we can um, uh, see the combinatorial uh, interpretation. So uh, when we consider uh, this uh, space, it, it can also be considered. Uh, as a tensor power of the GLN uh, module uh, lambda one. So, okay, this is the fundamental module which uh, is depicted by the box diagram. And the, uh, inside this module, we have a base. So, the basis will correspond to the filling of this diagram. So, uh, this is the polar uh, center mod. So, then uh, we can say that we can uh, consider uh, this decomposition. So uh, then using the uh, usual uh, RSK correspondence, we can uh, have the pair of a standard young tableau and a semi-standard young tableau. So in that way, we can produce uh, the uh, diagram. So, uh, and, uh, so, and the question for other serious um, the algebras, uh, basically remains. So now uh, this question is uh, more complicated actually than uh, it may appear uh, firstly, uh, because, well, yeah, uh, okay. uh, because there are some other uh, geologies besides the true wild reality. Uh, there is the, uh, just the wild reality. So, so the first the true wild reality, I have talked about this now. Uh, the uh, caveat. So when we consider the how geology, the usual how geology that we, probably you uh, might be aware of, uh, sometimes it's uh, called the geology. Okay, how geology this is uh, the um, more or less known name for this. So that's uh, where you uh, consider the uh, uh, symmetric algebra, and then uh, beside, uh, beside, beside the fact that uh, this space is in the dimensional in, in, in a more or less sense, you can make this uh, decomposition. But now, uh, 
if you uh, will try to uh, study certain asymptotics, then uh, it's, uh, it makes sense to uh, make some restrictions on the diagrams. So, and the asymptotical problems related to uh, actually the how geology have been widely studied. Uh, well, the first, uh, first, first, uh, first thing how can we deal with those diagrams is that we can consider the diagrams of a science app, or we can consider diagrams which are contained in the rectangle that uh, that was uh, studied by Gordon uh, and Shaw, and also it's related to the Arctic uh, Circle of closing Studies and an uh, ensemble. Uh, later, I will tell how our problem is related to, to, to what tidings and to what is involved. So this relation is actually uh, well studied. And also there is another uh, approach uh, using an approach by uh, people uh, that uh, regards the short matter on partitions. So, because we can consider the characters and the corresponding Cauchy identities. So basically here is the very, very short uh, historical facts, uh, how the idea of the asymptotic study of the hard reality has been treated previously. Uh, but uh, there is um, also uh, the reality that, okay, that we are uh, going to talk about now, is the skew hard reality. Okay. Why uh, have we uh, come uh, to such a problem? So at first, we have been studying the tensor product decompositions. And uh, we have been looking for cases where, uh, so, so the tensor product decompositions of uh, certain modules, then we can uh, decompose it as sum of the lambda and lambda uh, depiction of uh, the difference on on the uh, tensor power and so we uh, have been uh, studying such decompositions and we were uh, trying to understand in what cases uh, this formula uh, is has, has a nice shape so there are various ways to get this multiplicity if you consider such tensor products uh, for simple the algebras they are known uh, but um, Mm, not well in, in a general case, these multiplicities are very complicated and it's hard uh, to uh, consider any asymptotics uh, using uh, those formulas for multiplicity because if you consider the asymptotics of the rate going to infinity, uh, it may be uh, difficult and uh, somewhat uh, troublesome. But in our research, we have discovered certain cases where these uh, uh, multiplicities. Have a nice, uh, have nice formulas so which are also vectorizable. And we thought that maybe that might have been related to certain facts, certain realities, which appear on the uh, representative periodic level. So, yeah, and uh, at that point, so for example, one of those examples was we have considered uh, the uh, spinner, spinner model of uh, S of the first one. And we have uh, looked at extensive problems. So uh, actually, these multiplicities, and we have decomposed them into individual symbols. And also, these multiplicities turn out to be really nice and factorizable properties. So later, we have uh, calculated some asymptotical results. We have found the limit sheets. Uh, I will talk about that a little bit later, but the uh, question was still will still remain why why the, the formula in this case uh, is factorizable, but uh, for example, if we consider the the vector module, then the formula is not factorizable. Okay. Um, so, yeah. so that was the uh, half So, I want to say the experimental way that we have come up to this idea of reality. So, let me tell about more about skew hard reality uh, and um, what is it all about. So, in 1989, in, in the article of how, 
he had uh, he had uh, shown the dual pairs of uh, uh, Lie groups, and uh, later in the uh, article of the uh, and Rikikov, the module of the bimodule for this pair of Lie groups uh, was uh, described explicitly. Uh, so. The fact is that we, if we consider this uh, pair of the group, so again, we have PGL and VLP, and both of them, we have two sympathetic groups of uh, now and associated plus one and P. So we will have the duality regarding a certain representation, but what representation? Okay, let uh, uh, let me say now, maybe you have already guessed if uh, it's called the skew duality. It has to do something with the uh, Sierra algebra because we already have the usual cardiality, which uh, is connected to the uh, symmetric space. But now, uh, what about exterior algebra? Yes, so this cardiality is exactly about uh, this case. So if we consider the natural module of the uh, first group and we consider the initial module of the second group and denote them by B and W. Okay, so we can uh, say that uh, actually, if we consider the uh, stereo algebra of such a space, of a tensor space where the B is multiplied by W, uh, uh, so then exclusively listed the modules, then uh, we will have uh, the certain multiplicity reductions of those groups. So this is one uh, fact. This is called the GLN GLT. So here you must know. So so this is a bimodal. So exactly, you consider this uh, exterior algebra, and you consider this space as the bimodal GLN So here, um, in the first place, it is a irreducible module of GM corresponding to young diagram lambda, and here is uh, the lambda bar prime. So it's important to note uh, that these uh, would be some of uh, uh, the diagrams that uh, fit inside a such a box and time scale. So, and how does the lambda bar prime put together with the lambda? They, it's uh, like this. So it's a conjugated transpose diagram. So here, in a small example, you can see that for GL3, we have lambda, then we have the GL4, and the lambda bar prime is actually this piece, uh, third and uh, conjugated and transposed. So I have not written here that we sum up uh, over the not over the diagrams, but the diagrams that fit inside the box, but I have excluded, so I hope uh, there will be any uh, problem with that. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah. So, and again, so. I have started my talk uh, about the tensor powers and how does the skew how the relative can help us. Okay, so exactly we can consider uh, the action of one of the groups in the pair. So we can consider a GLN module and take it to the uh, tensor uh, uh, tensor power case. So this skew how the GLN GLP which have, we have established previously. Uh, could be seen uh, just on the level of the tensor product decomposition of representation of one of the groups in a pair. So uh, here, or what what does happen here? So we take the exterior algebra of the uh, vector representation of the GMF. Then, uh, okay, this is a module on GMF model. So then we take its tensor power, which is the GMF model, and then. We decompose it into irreducibles with the following multiplicities. And here we can see uh, that actually the multiplicity in the center product uh, decomposition is uh, the dimension of the GLP module corresponding to the diagram of the under bar prime. And uh, that is kind of makes it some hope, <laughs> and gives us some hope about uh, well, uh, whether. Uh, whether this is the case of where the multiplicity is characterizable and it's described. So if we try to look uh, at this uh, how it is for the other pairs of the use, maybe, maybe that will uh, help us 
to answer uh, the question about this exact example. So why do we have the spinner uh, to the from the spinner module of SO to M, which is factorizable? But we'll get to that later. So the, which the, the multiple is factorizable. Okay, so both GL and GLP is the simplest example. And basically, <laughs> I will spend most of my time uh, telling about this. Uh, but if I have some time, I will talk about this again. So can you have a time? So again, uh, now we have uh, all the rights to use the Howe reality uh, for the other pairs of the group. So if uh, and to see what formulas for the term of power decomposition does it give us. So if we use the S P to N as a P to H to the Howe reality, we can consider again the uh, uh, same modules, and in that case we uh, uh, they are even dimensional. So they uh, could be described as a sum of the isotropic uh, subspaces with respect to preserved symmetric bilinear form. And here we have uh, the statement of this in Haldolgi. So in that case, we will have a serial algebra of the tensor products of well, one of those spaces times C3. So actually here. And then the see how to see that um, it has a positive secret. Okay, so again, we can see that here is number, here is number bar prime. Uh, again, the diagrams are, well, they are a little bit different from GL diagrams, but actually, number bar prime could be obtained from number using the same procedure. So, and again, this problem considered as the, as the problem for uh, tensor power and position of sp 2 module gives us uh, the composition to the reducibles. Again, we have the tensor power, we have the exterior algebra of the even dimensional space, we decompose it into reducible, we have the damage. So, again, is a skew, is a shifted partition or partition? Uh, uh, well, uh, it, it is uh, the partition actually. Uh, it, it, yeah, we have uh, we have uh, certain um, modifications of uh, the uh, young diagrams for the for, for different things. Yeah. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, okay. So next. next yeah, so okay, so here is the reality actually SO2 n plus one into K, which uh, helps us to give the answer to our problem. It's a little bit um a little bit complicated, so maybe I will need to also uh right now if I will have I will have oh uh, yeah, yeah, this is this is really not something that can help me, but okay. So what 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 happens here? Again, the same procedure, the standard module. Uh, is is c to the two k and c to the two n plus one. So the standard module decomposes just like that into the sum of the irreducible subspaces. And again, the spin reality in the most its most general formulation tells us that we have these actions. So in a uh, multiplicity free action. So here the lambda uh, the modified the young drivers, which uh, basically have. The uh, you know, the first column of with one half. So because we have to somehow uh, describe uh, the spinner uh, modules. So in fact, and we also have some fillings with uh, different, not, not just uh, with the numbers from one to n, but from the numbers one one bar to the bar uh, k k bar n n bar. So it's it's I, I'm telling totally you this here because it's a little combinatorial trick. Uh, but actually, uh, again, uh, considering it as the dimension uh, problem, we uh, discovered this. Okay, so now you take a look that it kind of looks the same as our problem here, only the problem here, we have the spinner module, okay? And here we have the uh, exterior algebra uh, of the uh, fundamental of, of the standard module. So. Is it is it yeah I can I can get this oh, okay. okay so here we have the spinner uh, representation yeah and here we have the uh, exterior algebra well does anybody <laughs> anybody guess how this uh, can help us with this 
because well, the first point it uh, doesn't look quite the same. Uh, you know, do you have any ideas about that? Maybe I can uh, spend some some of my time by uh, explaining what what sort of the uh, the example. So maybe I can I, I can make a smaller example. So not in the most uh, general case. <laughs> okay, so uh, if we consider the SO2 and plus one case, uh, we can uh, make we can see a short example uh, in the in the uh, representation uh, well, in the weight space. We consider the uh, weight space of the balance of elements. So okay, we we can say uh, that here this. Uh, the uh, alpha one, alpha two, and here is the weight diagram, uh, diagram of uh, W. Okay, so it's five dimensional. So it's five. So this is the presentation is five dimensional. Okay. Uh, then. What what about spinner representation? Well, spinner representation, we know that it's a uh, four dimension. Okay. So what does it have in common? Well, the question is that uh, in fact you can consider a tensor square of the spinner representation, and uh, the tensor square will give us. Uh, exactly some part of the exterior algebra. Okay, so if we consider the tensor square, how do we how do how do we uh, in the level of the uh, <clears throat> weight diagrams of representation? How can we construct a square uh, tensor square? So basically, we uh, will construct the diagram which is larger than the point. Let me just um this okay. I actually erase everything which is out of ordinary. So that was the previous thing implementation. Then uh, we make a tensor square. So how do we do we we start this uh diagram from the very forms uh, where it begins? So we can have something like this, okay. So here we also have multiplicity skew, right? And here we'll have multiplicities four, I guess. Okay. Um, okay. So, and if we consider the uh, exterior algebra of W on the level of the weight diagrams, it could be seen. But it, it exactly uh, corresponds to a uh, few uh, spinner representations square. Well, I make two, so two copies of that. So that is uh, some. Uh, so this is just one of the components, okay? But you can have, so this is, you can have the W zero, W. Plus the one W. Okay, so, so and actually you can uh, make this a short exercise because I I, I want to make you all spend too much time on that. And, uh, so that this uh, the exterior algebra of this representation exactly uh, respond to the um, two two times uh, square of this spin representation. So and that's why. That's why this skewed causality can actually help us uh, help us to solve this question. So there is no not actually a duality for the spin representation, but there is a duality for the exterior algebra of the standard representation. And it, again, due to this relation, that will help us to uh, get the answer to this problem. So can I have the next slide, please? Yeah. So that that was uh, that's in the most general case what I have been talking about. 
Exactly. So uh, this figure representation is uh, the equal last fundamental representation. So, and we have the size of the presence of the whole uh, exterior algebra of the standard representation to the two types of the square. So, again, we uh, try to, uh, right now, there is some uh, additional knowledge about that the P group actually is a two-point cover of all two K. And um, also that we can um, use SO to K dimensions to obtain P to K dimensions. Uh, because on the language of how to skew hardware, you would have SO2 and S1 into K by the other. So like, we actually would like to have those because this is kind of knowledgeable. So, and in the very last uh, fact, a uh, very last step, we obtained this uh, formula for the tender product multiple system. So, again, uh, skew hardware material helped us also uh, in this working time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I won't be maybe spending too much time on the last uh, pair of uh, the groups. So it's so when O to K. Again, uh, we can consider the uh, as a public space, but in, in fact, uh, by the very end of this procedure, it's important to, okay, <laughs> so that I didn't think it doesn't square for some, for some reason, it doesn't does a part for some reason, and uh, it has disappeared. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> maybe I, maybe, maybe, okay. So uh, actually, what's important to understand that here we can decompose a tender power of the sum of two fundamental representations. So because the exterior algebra that in the very end uh, that we are looking to the exterior algebra of the uh, standard representation could be decomposed into some of even n of powers, and this uh, two modules. Are exactly the last one you mentioned, the module of so and the one between us. So, uh, this is the sum that we have to, should have to the tender power, and it could be decomposed into a reusable. Well, if I had time, I could have shown you the way diagrams there are three dimensions for SO6. They're kind of nice, but probably I wonder if this is more suitable for. I think not. But again, this is, uh, there is uh, some. Nice examples so that you can actually have by using uh, this uh, F and Rift. Okay, so uh, here uh, basically I have listed now all the uh, probabilities, few probability elements. Yeah, here uh, on the, the slide. So, what is the summary of the first part of the talk? That the skew probability can help us to obtain the multiplicities in the tensor power uh, of the circular module. So for GLN, this is the exterior algebra of nature representation. For SO2 n plus one, it is the spinner fundamental representation. For SE2n, it is the exterior algebra of nature representation. And for SO2n, it is the sum of the spinner representation. So th this, has a, this is actually the fundamental <laughs> the facts. Uh, that uh, right now we have the answer. So if we consider these tensor powers, then we have the answer to the tensor power decomposition problem with the formulas which are contrasting. And these formulas could uh, be explored with the asymptotic uh, instruments. So then we can state a problem of uh, how uh, can we put limit shapes of young diagrams. Uh, maybe you look for central limits theories. So when we have the uh, formulas, uh, now this question actually, the answer to this question can actually become a real. But uh, to do the asymptotic analysis, we actually have to do some a little bit more extra work uh, because uh, you know we have in the parts of the formula we have diagonal lambda, but the multiplicities are uh, express uh, the, uh, the uh, lambda bar prime. So what can we do? So now we should be uh, doing some technical work. So how can we relate the parameters of lambda bar prime to the parameters of lambda? Okay. Okay. Uh, but that's uh, that's for uh, for uh, for a little bit later. Um, right now, I uh, wanted to um, say that there is such as an RSP algorithm corresponds to the actual wild GRT. Just in the very same uh, manner, we have the so-called dual RSP 
uh, which can help us to construct uh, random Young diagrams uh, corresponding to this view probability. So, uh, how does it work? So, firstly, we can say that uh, uh, the basis in this space, so we we'll consider the exterior of the world space. So, the basis of the space is uh, the following. And the basis of the exterior algebra is actually uh, the, the exterior uh, products of uh, these vectors. Okay. So now we can, uh, I will show you how can we uh, take a simple example. And actually, this could be related to the matrix of random matrix of zeros and one. I don't think you can make a difference. Um, so here is the vector from the exterior tower. And you can see that, okay, we put the numbers one. At the positions where where we have non zero uh, parts uh, in, in this basis vector. So then uh, here we can uh, make a correspondence with this uh, type of uh, sequences. And here again, so the corresponding to this n times k method from zero. So what is a such a sequence? Now uh, we can uh, introduce a dual RSP algorithm. Which, uh, how, how does it work? It works like we bought the boxes with the equal and then down. So at first we have one here, then we stick up the two and we stick up the three. But when now we have this uh, number two appearing, uh, okay, so this uh, number two it goes exactly uh, right uh, right here and we push this to be uh, yellow, it gives you that. Okay, then now four and six here. And well, this is not a very interesting example. No. <laughs> yeah, the interesting thing is that one is actually goes here. So, well, this is a very simple question, it's a simple example, but uh, one should know that so we can use this algorithm. And also, this algorithm is for GLN and GLK, you must understand, because for other algorithms, we have more interesting algorithms. Uh, maybe I can just name them, maybe if I have time, I will talk about them. They are more, more specific. So, uh, by the end of the application of the dual RSK algorithm, we have the pair of two semi standards Young tuples, okay, P and uh, Q. So, uh, in that sense, uh, we cannot relate. Uh, so, and they have the same shape. So, we can now relate uh, the uh, diagram of a certain shape uh, to what we had in the beginning. They can I think. Okay. But, uh, Right now, there is some technical part, which I will try to go real quickly. Um, because um, if, oh, what I want here is, uh, well, at the very end, we need a formula for dimensions, okay? But how can we calculate those dimensions? Well, one of the ways that we use is actually the algebra lemma. And algebra lemma has can be a little bit fast. So at that point, we have to make certain correspondence between the young diagram that we have obtained uh, using uh, our method with certain paths. And there are actually two ways we can do that. One of, uh, one of the methods is uh, the row bijection. So here you can see this, this on the example, this is the younger bar parent diagram because, well, I, I really want to deal with this diagram actually. So in the row bijection, you can, um, you should uh, construct a path this correspond to the row. So here you can see the path here corresponding to the first row. It starts from the right. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, paths. And actually we have six rows from the last row exactly. It's important to understand so that we have this example uh, K46. And it is not there. So what do we do? We uh, make a correspondence for the each row to the latest step with certain steps. And uh, we say that the starting points uh, are the following, and then points are the following, and the topmost row uh, is the corresponds with the rightmost pair. Well, this is a uh, quite technical thing. It, all of you can do this using uh, this recipe. Just uh, sometimes I could just say use a uh, row projection. So um, probably. Uh, I won't be dealing much here. Here, actually, here's the recipe. Uh, all of you can apply it and uh, do it this way. You can have a uh, slide. Here. And also, there is the so called column digestion. So, now another way to uh, make the paths uh, corresponding to uh, young diagrams. 
is that you can uh, on top of, is that you can read by columns. So now uh, the first column corresponds to this path, which is the rightmost path, and um, there is a sort of university to do that. So now the steps are minus one, 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 and we have the children starting from the course. So to this, uh, this road is written from top to bottom and to left to right. And with this version, we have the following subset of the paths on LRTS. So can I do that? Okay, great. So, but then uh, th there was one combinatorial correspondence for G GL and GLP. Another one is uh, that we can use actually uh, the GT patterns or the Rosic targets. Um, so right now, uh, we have understood that the dimension of the uh, younger part of the module corresponding to the younger part prime equal to the number of semi-cellular chunks of the uh, of the shape of the bar prime uh, filled, filled with numbers from one to two. Okay. And exactly uh, everybody knows that we can count this to go by uh, counting the corresponding to each patterns. Well, uh, we uh, construct the GPT pattern corresponding to the zoom diagram. It is this triangle array, which uh, well, has, has the recipe of doing that. Uh, but um, there is an easy way to memorize how the GT can be constructed from the end to is that um, you know, the first, uh, first uh, row, we have the row lengths. Then we have the row lengths of the young to blow if we exclude the bigger number. So here we see six. Then on the third row, we directly list the row lengths if we exclude all of the two for a bigger number, five and six. So here you can see that, that uh, this array can be easily constructed from here. So five, two, three, one, zero is so the row length. And then we could cancel the six, right? Uh, and here and here, so we have this second row, five, three, two, three, zero. So I mean, the array is very good. So it's one of the possible miniatural um, construction that could be related to uh, that diagram, but actually uh, we will uh, use another way, another inventory of two uh, is uh, the loss of standings. Uh, can I have a second? Yeah, well, the loss of standings, the dual known uh, inventory of construction, it, it has been also widely used for the regular uh, sure, uh, well, uh, the GLT and for the Earth's for regular uh, hard reality. Uh, but here we have thought of a way, how could we uh, some tilings uh, of hexagon or maybe of hexagon. Uh, so which types of tilings actually correspond uh, to mm, our young uh, So right now we, we have this pattern and we can say that the numbers on the first row will correspond to the positions of the uh, blue uh, tile, uh, if we count from the bottom. So here, uh, these numbers are actually the position. Well, here, uh, there is nothing new, only that it, it somehow uh, stops in the middle, uh, because you can understand that here, N and K should not be equal right now. And you can see that this part actually has the sixth uh, uh, six uh, um, steps, and here there are five, uh, five uh, vertical, um, uh, five vertical possibilities to start the uh, uh, the, the paths. So, and well, if we try to close it, that would be a uh, kind of uh, the wall shape will not be seen. But that's uh, not such a big problem. We have found a way how to deal with that. Also, the important note that I uh, would say is that here, uh, if you might remember that this uh, takes this blue paths look somewhat familiar. Yes. And in fact, those are the paths that we have two slides ago. Those are the column readings, which we have, uh, we have found for our diagram. So, uh, and one way is just uh, to read the columns of the uh, um, the reading. Then another way is just to draw uh, the GT patterns, to draw this highly, and then to assign certain path uh, steps to this time. So it's one to one correspondence. So, yeah. Also, I 
So basically, and if we, you must understand, so if we uh, here uh, write down uh, the position of the house, then we have basically defined everything. So we have defined the empty block. Uh, we have defined the corresponding gene pattern. So there is no other uh, way of doing it. So they, uh, this uh, help exactly uh, define um, our field. So I can have the next Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, for the purpose of uh, the later, uh, later work, uh, it's uh, valuable to uh, define uh, the positions of the animals because. Uh, right now, uh, we will be actually will be dealing with the positions of the endpoints in our resulting formulas. So, and the positions of endpoints are uh, basically they could be defined via the row lengths of the diagram lambda. So here you must uh, know that we have started from lambda by prime, uh, then we have chain uh, lambda. So lambda is uh, this table. And uh, the uh, A's could also uh, closely be used uh, using the uh, GPA. So, in the very end, uh, now we have a certain way how to deal with lambda and lambda bar prime and how they are related. So, uh, can I have the next slide, please? Yes, and uh, the next slide. Yeah, because this is, yeah, okay. So, and that is what we have come up to this point. So if you if you see, our uh, hexagon is kind of uh, not uh, very symmetric. Yes, because here we have and six uh, six steps, and here we have uh, five five vertical positions and uh, five six positions. So this is kind of like a, a problem because we should we should somehow connect them and actually. One doesn't have a special like liberal construction of how to because uh, this is kind of the technical construction. And here in the middle, we have the positions of this uh triangle that actually correspond to the shape of the number. Okay. And here you can say that we have facts which correspond to the whole region, and here we have facts which correspond to the whole region of the but they are kind of badly connected. You can Somehow, issue in the way of how we can connect them, uh, but that's not very convenient. And also, the difference of these triangles is not very convenient. Uh, so, well, uh, regarding uh, one thing, uh, this number of construction, uh, we can say that it is in one to one correspondence with the tiles of the abstract diamond, where you can uh, have tiles with the three possible dominoes. On the, this part, which is uh, the, it has the highest key, and uh, then the timing of another type of three possible dominoes uh, on this part. So, exactly, and you can see that those uh, dark uh, gray uh, triangles uh, will correspond to these uh, horizontal uh, steps and uh, to the green uh, dominoes. So, uh, so, here basically, now we can reformulate our. Our statement is uh, how do we calculate the these tilings of such an aspect that uh, the diamond has, has three possible uh, 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 three, three possible domains in one part and three possible in another. And here uh, we have a simulation provided uh, by our author then here was kind of small. Uh, um, well, <laughs> I I actually have included this in the slide. So basically, it shows like if you consider uh, if we consider a simulation of a large uh, diagram, we have the frozen regions. They could be seen. They could be even seen here uh, because well, that's just in the very this example. But if you consider a larger example, please see that uh, this uh, picture of looks like that. I don't have an answer. So. Yeah, okay, yeah, I have included this. The, 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 so, yeah, so here we have the simulation, uh, which and this is the last map here. Um, which is, it's, it actually can be some, some curve, but uh, well, that, 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 that's another problem to describe uh, the limiting curve of, of such a thing. So, actually, we describe the shape of young diagrams, but actually, that could be reformulated uh, by describing uh, the 
the current here here in the middle of the large relevance. Okay, can we go? Um, so now, uh, basically, there is just some technical words because uh, we have understood that our dimensional is the number of lozenges of trapezoid. And the number of lozenge tiles of the tra trapezoid could be reformulated uh, as a number of configurations of n non intersecting paths of length k. And just like uh, the regular recipe I have shown, so just a, a little uh, more note that we can we should make the paths longer just to uh, apply the algebra. So uh, algebra number allows us to calculate the number of paths with non-intersecting lattice paths between certain points using the determinable formula. This is a very well known name. And if we uh, uh, make uh, this, so we put the starting points here, well, we can actually apply the LGB lemma and say that the number, the R dimension of gamma bar prime, which we have been looking from the very beginning, is actually equal to this determinant. And this determinant could be calculated, okay? And can I have the most yeah, here is a, here is a way to calculate uh, the determinants, but I will be I'm trying to solve this very profoundly mm, right now. Is that okay? Like at this point, we uh, uh, have obtained the project formula. The project formula that I was talking about here, the same type of project formula now, uh, and the same type of project formula like Kerr uh, had when he had studied the acid release. Now, this is. Actually doable, and um, you can get the multiplicity in this kind of uh, experiment. The important to know is that we have these CAIs, which have the position of points, uh, but uh, they are related to the uh, row of uh, lengths of the young diagonal. Okay, can I have one slide, please? Yeah, so uh, that is the su summary of uh, the combinatorial part is that actually. Uh, we have obtained the multiplicity formula, which are factorizable for uh, all uh, for the four series that I have been talking about. So uh, the two calculus allows us to get the multiplicity uh, for the uh, the LN case in such an expression. This or what I have been explaining further. Then again, uh, we will have the same type of formula for the uh so the plus one it's interesting that here we have a uh, kind of uh like a determinant of formula well this is not a coincidence actually uh later uh, I, i'll say a couple of words about this we will uh, we are also hearing such a formula for the multiplicity for sp2 l models now uh, we also have this uh part um uh, looking like here which i also has this uh part of the tutorials and then all the so to end. So basically uh, that's uh, the general miniature of the result that uh, we have obtained from those reality that will later uh, allow us to do some asymptotic calculation. But again one must note that for D L N uh the I is related to the uh, rows of the diagram. And then uh, for rather we have this relation with the row lengths uh, is the following. So again, one must know that for this series, the diagrams are well, some of them have well, half columns, some of them are just like we modified so because one must understand that the regular diagrams that we know are are for DLA. So there are some around below and uh, other types of below that we have used. Uh, can we in this? Yeah, we get to go. Well, our necessary couple of words. So, uh, if we 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 can formulate a certain problem uh, using also the lozenges, but of course, uh, actually, uh, not actually, our result has been studied uh, by um, the other board. So we can um, actually uh, construct kind of like uh, these. Um, Tiles, but for other uh, series. So uh, we'll also have the lossage tiles of the half half of them. The same problem remains, uh, but it will be almost metric up to the middle. And also for SO2L, we'll have the symmetry for the blue tiles except for the middle part. But this is just the illustration. I will be using that in my own presentation. Yes. 
So now um, I don't have much time left, but I'll be talking really quickly about the asymptotical part. So again, just uh, if the very uh, problem in the state of um, here, well, we can introduce the probability measure on young diagrams uh for the gln gln case so consider just the example of gln gln case so uh it's actually a uniform measure on matrices of zeros and one again uh for the other pairs of the groups we can consider the following measure uh, and so important the thing that now we can try to derive the asymptotics uh so, and for that, we use uh, the explicit formulas for uh, dimensions of lambda bar prime in terms of rho that one. So, there was general result that we have deal, dealt with previously. Uh, we get those multiplicity formulas, how to place uh, dimensions of uh, lambda bar prime uh, with the rho that's lambda. Okay. So, uh, so, yeah, so there are various ways uh, to uh, introduce uh, some asymptotic analysis, as I have been talking previously, like in the symmetric case, uh, there was a study uh, of uh, Petrov, uh, about the uh, ensemble, like right here, uh, we will have the Kravchuk polynomial ensemble. So how, how does it look like? So if you consider this measure, and you also put the dimension. You can and finally see that here we have the determinant, and here we have the weight. And actually, this is a measurement of coefficient, and this weight uh, corresponds to, to polynomial. So that is a nice uh, actual fact that uh, well, allowed us actually to calculate uh, also um, all, also different aspects. But this is uh, the uh, the approach of Baradin and uh, we, uh, in our first research, we have only had different shapes, but that is also one of the ways. So, if we have uh, the random methods of zeros and ones, we can uh, we can obtain two semi-centered yanta group shaped yanta, then a random yanta diagram, and then we say that okay, those yanta diagrams uh, run random yanta diagrams. They correspond to the random configuration of points on the line. So here there is a line, and there is a the points. So this is a, a determinantal points uh, process. And now there is uh, all uh, the uh, see uh, all, uh, all the map that is related to the determinantal point processes that was well studied and uh, could be applied in this case. So well, uh, I'm not sure. Talk about uh, this exact uh, way, but uh, maybe I'll have time to. Um, yeah, I can just, I'll just have time to state the theorem. Um, so, the theorem that uh, we have uh, proved uh, for uh, all uh, the dual pairs uh, that uh, correspond to skew probability is the following. So, if we consider the following asymptotics, well, n goes to infinity and k goes to infinity, and k uh, over n goes to constant in the same limit, then uh, if we have the upper boundary of the young number, uh, which is, um, we can draw. So if we have an upper boundary of the young diagram here, so we can consider this as a function of n. Uh, it, 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 it will be rotated and scaled by 1 over n. So we scale by 1 over n, this one diagram, because we will consider the limit. Then, uh, with respect to the measure that, uh, with the pressure measure that we have described previously, it converges uh, in probability with respect to the supremum norm to some limit shape. Okay. So, the limit shape, uh, actually, I, I don't have a picture here, but the way to describe this shape is uh, somewhat uh, not very uh, direct. Uh, we can describe it using the density function, and the expression of the limit shape is like this. 
uh, basically uh, they're a little bit different for C greater than one and C less than one. And can I have another one? Yeah, so okay. And here is a, here is actually an expression for the density. It could be a little simplified that it will be, but uh, uh, right now uh, I have just this expression. So here you can see uh, maybe this is a little bit, uh, this example is a little bit small, but if we explicitly construct the function according to such a formula, uh, we can see uh, that uh, here we have the uh, the sample. Here and here we have this uh, leading shape constructed by uh, this formula. So for, for other developers, we have we should have a slightly shifted argument. But here are the explicit examples uh, for most uh, probable uh, diagrams, and you can see exactly maybe it's in the last page. Let's uh, can I have it the last one. So the last slide, last slide that I want to show you maybe later. Um, you have some questions, I will say how to do that. So if we have this sampling of random diagrams, uh, we can use the algorithms of a dual landscape for GLN, Aurelius version for SP2L, uh, uh, Bergman Stromer, and Ocali insertion for other series to obtain uh, such um, a sampling. And um, the, here is an example of the random young diagram, which is obtained by dual landscape for GLPP. And uh, K equal to uh, maybe so and if, here is an example for a simple data. So and it fits inside uh, the larger picture. So actually it's uh, it, it's not really reasonable to talk about it right now because I haven't told much about how the diagrams for the plus one look like and how are they constructed. Uh, but uh, this is like our fact. So if we do the sample, and here maybe it's a little bit uh, small. Uh, so this picture is not, but you can also see that the shape that is uh, done according to so this formula we have uh, really good. So let me summarize uh, for now all the main results. So the main results is this limit shape theorem. We have obtained uh, the uh, limit shape according to such a formula for uh, this uh, series of uh, algebras and for the statement of the uh, this uh, product decomposition of certain modules which, are, which I have been told, uh, said about previously. Uh, we have um, also um, uh, found a proof of the uh, central uh, limit uh, theorem uh, in uh, the case. Uh, using uh, the uh, fact with the polynomial ensembles, that's of some special techniques. Uh, we uh, have investigated uh, the uh, connection of this uh, problem uh, with uh, with the uh, true polynomials and actually with free fermions. That's uh, the course of uh, Anton Mazarov, who is present here. So if you are interested, uh, you can go uh, to his course. He is he is explaining explicitly the techniques uh, of uh, how uh, we use uh, the three fermions in uh, dealing with such problems. And uh, also, Pyro 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 is also here. So uh, Pyro Nikitin, uh, you can also explain uh, more about uh, combinatorics. He has the course on uh, symmetric groups, but actually, it's already. Uh, it, it, he had the last lecture. Last lecture today. Yes, he had the last lecture today. So, <laughs> so next semester uh, he will have lectures, but still you can come uh, and ask him anytime. So uh, these researchers are present here in USA. So uh, please uh, contact them if you have uh, questions and if you are interested in, in such a topic. Uh, of uh, exploring limit shapes and connecting such problems with uh, preformias, with uh, also the representation, uh, the, uh, different representation theoretic problems. So, what do we plan to do? Well, in the next future, maybe we'll try to generalize uh, this philosophy. Maybe uh, we have to, to think what uh, can happen in case of uh, super algebras if that is actually doable, because there is also the assumed hard ability for these super algebras, uh, which is studied, but we haven't reached the point uh, of stating this problem for super algebras yet. So what I want to say is that uh, that uh, type of asymptotic representation theoretical techniques 
which started in St. Petersburg uh, by Anatoly Moisevich Vershek, and we are uh, representatives of uh, his school is um, continuing the study uh, that uh, he's also interested in. So th this type of problems uh, is uh, also, they are also modern and uh, actually uh, also studied by the guys which shown by, by, uh, by, by uh, Warren, by I mean, Petrol, uh, so in the So if you are interested, uh, you can contact me, any of us. And uh, thank you again for uh, listening to me. And uh, I hope uh, it has been uh, understandable. And please ask your questions. Are there any questions? Very simple question because uh, I really don't understand in what kind of how do you get the videos. Because how do you make a general you take a look just the product of the pen or just rules, which is uh, somewhere one version of all of it and shunted correspondence? If you compare product of clones, this is the so-called view of the and shunted correspondence. So this is the I understood you just developed this uh, uh, approach for some. Uh, ABC decays. Ah, decay small. We don't know. Decays here. Yeah. Yes, decays experiment. Ah, ah, okay. ABC. Okay. okay. What I can say. But one very important phase of organization of correspondence and really how we are that it is really can be equipped with crystal structure. Yes, and this is very important because, uh, in some sense, uh, you know, air escape, but what is it? Because there are a lot of uh, insertion. Not only you didn't write that it is uh, uh, an escape insertion, like Robinson Shades and Crook insertion, but a lot of other insertions. Yes, and uh, Point uh, what I want to say, I was asked what happens if I take the product of rectangles, not just the cones, not just the uh, rooms, but rectangles. In this case, we will have a so called little wood region, for example, and uh, in some rejection. Yeah, what does it mean? Do you know generalization of this construction? Just not tender product of physical limitations, but tender product, a tender power or product of seven. Okay, what type of representation? So, in, in, in this case, the tender power is not important, but just uh, general power here is a product of arbitrary representations. And it is direct sum or something like uh, it, uh, right. Sorry. And, if, and if you say that we have sorry? If, if you say that we have uh, something like how the reality in this case, so what is acting on the other side? Uh, what is written here uh, on the right hand side? But a uh, little change in what the uh, first uh, Part in the dimension of the beautiful representation of the ocean of some weight. It, because this is dependent really on the. Okay, it is a long story. Maybe we we'll discuss. Maybe let us discuss, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I, and the other, for me, important point, I think we have the same purposes related to the. These asymptotics, because uh, how, how it's related to the double retake function. Because as I know, we skew and escape. I really want to listen where we have skewers. You mentioned skew power derivative, but skew and escape really is not a proof of skew power derivative. But what is you mentioned maybe what's combinatorial? There are two skew power 
new RSK and uh, augmented dual RSK. So no skew tableau, just that we get tableau. No, it's uh, it's difficult to explain. You need uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I understood that in your case, you have to consider the of Yes. Mm -hmm. In this case, I think so I thought you have to restrict the on table. So that you can restrict the on And you have concerned the objection for vertically restrict the on table. But in this case, I just pay not enough. Mm -hmm. Because there is a okay, basically it is made for other positive uh, matrices of soil. And my opinion, the conversation on the law is not yes. As I mentioned, do we have a combinatorial proof or identity analog for pressure identity for the taking part? Because common ordinary RSK gives you a combinatorial proof of the pressure pressure. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it doesn't say, but the balance of the condition of identity was done according to the two Montgomery polynomials, also very nice for me. But now you can specify even for some. On one of the polynomials and degenerate it for the mitigated function. You are again a place on nice with combinatorial again to the mitigated function, the monotonic polynomials, the mitigated polynomials, some other dimension, don't worry, which is also called a thing. And again, why do you think important considered as a product of forms? Because the character. Well, you can define the, some statistics on the real left and right and so inside, and the rest of the the combinatorial proof of identity for retailers. And this is another important for sort of the probabilistic integral system. And, uh, well, so it's for so long. Okay. There are too many questions. Okay, uh, but, I am very happy to that. There. Yes, but it seems that the connection with the Vitaker functions is genius. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's, uh, we should discuss mm -hmm. the well modules on the for the current temperatures. So it's not that close. No more connections here. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, again some uh, some I don't know misunderstanding. Because we take a function really what you really there are two kinds of we take functions. Ah, yeah, maybe you're speaking about the other yeah. and in the realistic case you are taking certain circumstances coefficient or decomposition of general we take a function on some basis. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, Well, okay, uh, yeah, I I think that I would be uh, I would like to talk about this uh, after the seminar because it feels like we have run out of time. But this is a very interesting. I uh, thank, thank you for the such a question. I uh, definitely need to uh, think about this. Probably this connection is well for us still has to be more. Because yes. I Let's continue after the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue after the talk. No. Let's continue after the talk. After we finish the talk. Yeah. Okay. Actually, the follow-up trick is a spiritual. He uh, uh, obtained uh, the formulas also for the uh, uh, Q deformations uh, using the crystal based approach. So we have also this uh, part of uh, our research. 
So yes, uh, the answer to the first question is yes, uh, the crystal techniques could, could be used uh, in solving such problems. But uh, as for the checker functions, I still uh, have to think about it. We haven't used this approach. And uh, well, I think this is still has to be explored in the context of our problems. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Okay, now let's start the program again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.